I was diagnosed with lupus in 2003 at the age of 32. until 2006 that I was diagnosed with systemic lupus. The symptom of lupus came when I was in the fourth grade. We were having field day at school and I broke out in a rash from head to toe. My parents took me to the pediatrician and the pediatrician diagnosed me with photosensitivity and said due to the fact that I was fair skinned and had red hair that I was allergic to the sun. Um, it wasn't until like 2003 that I actually went to my doctor because all my lab work was coming down with like my lab work, my white blood cells was 1.7 and 1.9. That's when he tested me for lupus. Um, I didn't have any symptoms up until 2006. Um, and in 2006, the symptoms that I was having was is I could not get off the couch. I couldn't move. I knew once I got past the hour or two hour mark after I woke up, I was fine. I could get up and move around, but it was those first hour, two hours that I would struggle getting up. And it was so bad to the point to where my father would have to pick me up off the couch and carry me to wherever I needed to go. Mostly it was to a hot tub. Because the only other thing I needed to do was to sit me in the hot tub until the pain went away. Although I was diagnosed in 2003, I had no symptoms. Uh, he wanted to put me on a medication for the lupus, he wanted to put me on Plaquenil, and he wanted to put me on prednisone. I was pretty much a non-compliant patient because I didn't have I didn't have health insurance. It wasn't until 2006 that I was having a really hard time breathing, and whenever I would lay on my left side, my lungs would hurt. And so what they wound up doing, my parents wound up taking me to the hospital. They wound up doing x-rays and stuff and found that I had like a wedge-shaped pneumonia in my left lung. They also found bilateral pleural effusions. It's where you have fluid built up between the sac of your lung sac. I have Raynaud's. I have malignant hypertension. I have a lupus pneumonitis where it affects my lungs. I have asthma. I have mild COPD. I have, um, let's see. I have Sjogren's Syndrome, I also, I'm osteopenic, I'm not quite osteoporosis, I don't have that yet. Um, I have vasculitis, I have sebritis, um, I have a lot of leaky valves in my heart, um, and most of all lupus has attacked my kidneys, and it's attacked my kidneys hard. Um, what you would call a, um, a class 3 and a class 5 lupus nephritis, but my class 3 is active and my class 5 is inactive. Um, of having being diagnosed with lupus nephritis, they wound up putting me on Celsept and a pretty high dose of steroids. Um, as everybody knows, steroids causes a lot of bad side effects. Um, so I wound up getting taken off of Celsept because it just ripped my stomach apart. It just tore it up. I'm on uh, blood pressure medications. I'm on heartburn medication. I'm on magnesium, vitamin D, I'm on calcium, um, and I'm also on a baby aspirin daily. Um, on top of all that, um, they wound up switching me over to my Fortic. My Fortic, I've been on for about two months now, and um, it's not as bad on my system. It still makes me sick to my stomach, but I think it's because I'm getting used to it. It causes stomach cramps. The side effects are not pleasant, but... My rheumatologist pretty much told me, if I don't take these medications, I'm going to die. I think the two treatments that have helped me the most would be my blood pressure medication. It keeps my kidneys calm. Um, also, the Plaquenil. You know, I, I never had a side effect with Plaquenil whatsoever, and it wound up being my miracle drug. Um, Prednisone is a good drug for me. That's kind of like bittersweet. It helps me with my inflammation and my pain, but I'll tell you what, it's got a lot of nasty side effects. It has caused a vascular necrosis in both of my hips. So that would make it, to me, it's like the best and the worst medication I could possibly be on.
diagnosis is. Um, in 2006, I had uh, pneumonia. I had pleural effusions a lot. I had pericardial effusions, which if you've never had one, they're very painful where the fluid builds up around your heart. Um, I've also been diagnosed with malignant hypertension to where I didn't know my blood pressure was high. Nobody had told me. And going back over all my lab results and all my lab work and stuff, it always showed from my hospital visits that my blood pressure was high. But nobody ever treated me for it. It wasn't until you know, November of 2006 that I woke up with a really bad headache. A headache that just wouldn't go away. Um, and so I called my mom and dad and they came and picked me up and I collapsed in my dad's arms and I told them I felt like I was dying. So we went to the hospital and all they did for me at the hospital was give me a blood pressure medicine, give me Ativan, do some neurological testing, did not do an MRI and they sent me home. That wound up being the biggest mistake they ever made and it almost cost me my life. Later that night, I was back in the ER. I was unconscious. I had 105 fever. I was having seizures. And come to find out, I had had a stroke. And on top of that, I had like had nine TIAs. And um, they kept me in the hospital for two weeks because I didn't have insurance. And um, they kept me in there for two weeks to make sure that I could get the medications in me. They helped me set myself up to where I could get some discounted medication. And um, so, I mean, it got better from there, but in like April of 2007, I wound up having to go into a nursing home for three months for a rehabilitation. And for anybody who's in their 30s in a nursing home, it's not fun. You're normally the youngest person there. And um, I finally got out of there and then all the trouble just kept on going. My left thumb, I started having strokes due to Raynaud's. See, the Raynaud's or vasculitis started throwing strokes in my left thumb, and my left thumb literally, it was dying. It was turning gray, it was ulcerating, and finally it turned black. And it was like very hard to carry that around with me because it was like I had a tiny mummy attached to my body, and it's like I always had it wrapped up and I had it put up here to my chest so I wouldn't hit it, I wouldn't bump it, and nobody else would hit it. My old rheumatologist just said, well, let's just wait for it to fall off. Well, if anybody's ever been through something to where you've got one of your fingers or your thumb or your toes and they're dying, it's very painful. Finally, I went back into the hospital one time because I noticed at the base of it, it was turning green. And um, I had an orthopedic doctor come in and say that needs to be amputated. And I said, sir, I don't have insurance. He says, I don't care. It needs to come off. And um, he tried finding a hand doctor to do it for me, and everybody wouldn't do it for me because I didn't have insurance. Um, he finally wound up doing it himself, and um, I've had two amputations, half my thumb, half my toe, due to the same thing. I've had uh, pleural effusions, I've had pneumonia. I've been diagnosed with Sjogren's. Um, I have uh, lupus pneumonitis. I have serositis of my abdomen. Um, I have vasculitis, I have sobritis, um, the list could go on and um, it's just scary because when I was in the hospital for those two weeks when they were putting medicine into me, that night when I was there they wound up doing a spinal tap and they just pretty much told my parents I, we don't know what else to do, if we need to where do you want her to be transferred and all this time my parents are in the little room that they put your family in when pretty much there really is no hope for you. Fortunately, fortunately for me, I had a really good neurologist, and um, he also diagnosed me with PRESS, with, which is posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, which is when you have uncontrolled high blood pressure for so long, your brain begins to develop white lesions in your brain, and pretty much it caused me to have seizures. It just, it was bad. I wasn't supposed to make it, and I did. Um, Lupus is very scary and it's very unpredictable. You could be fine one day and then the next day you're not. Um, you could be here one day and the next day you're not. Um, it's just very unpredictable. Um, I've been informed that I have a severe case of lupus and that if um, that I'm probably going to die from it. I know it's not something you would want a doctor to tell you, but I pretty much cornered my doctor and I asked him, I said, hey, what are my chances of beating this? 
And he goes, I don't know what to tell you. He says, but your lupus is so severe. If we don't get it under control and we don't stay on top of the medications, um, you're going to die from it or you're going to have serious repercussions from it. Um, I've lost a thumb due to vasculitis or Raynaud's. I had to have it amputated because it, it was dying. I've had uh, my toe amputated, did the same thing. Um, I bruise a lot. I've had a blood transfusion. Um, that was not a pleasant experience either. But my most severe complication was my kidneys. At the present time, I'm not in remission. Um, I think I'm heading into a flare, which is kind of strange, as I started the myfortic about a month or so ago. And I wasn't in a flare then, and now that I've started taking the medication, I'm flaring. Um, I'm not hurting, per se, because I'm only the summer of 2006 did I hurt. And I always tell everybody I was doubting the fact that I even had lupus because I didn't hurt like everybody else. Went to my rheumatologist, and he told me, well, the ones that hurt, they're lucky. Because I guess the people that don't hurt take their health for granted. And he told me that could be a very tricky situation because due to the fact that I don't hurt doesn't mean it's not destroying my body. And due to the fact that I feel fine on the outside and I look fine on the outside doesn't mean that lupus just isn't ripping me apart. Um, so yeah, I would say I'm, I'm in a flare. I haven't been in remission once since I was diagnosed in 2003. I can give someone who's suffering from lupus or another chronic illness is be your own advocate. Push your doctors to answer questions. Um, that's what they're there for. They're there to answer your questions. Um, if they kind of make you seem like you're just losing your mind or you're, you know, they're you're testing their last nerve, find a different doctor. Um, also, if you're having like headaches, lung problems, and kidney problems, Get those kind of doctors that specialize in it. Get yourself a neurologist. Get yourself a pulmonologist. And get yourself a nephrologist. Um, it's better to have all those doctors under your belt who treat each individual specialty, but make sure they keep in contact with your rheumatologist. Um, they're the ones that know best, but when it comes to specialty things, our specialist doctors out there know best. Um, be religious with your medication and take your medication like you're supposed to because although the medications are bad, have also awful side effects, they will eventually either put you into remission or they'll get you close enough to remission to where you can live a very close to a normal life. Also, if your body says you're tired, sleep. Your body heals best when you're sleeping. Um, stay positive, stay strong, educate your friends and family. Um, educate those around you. That's the best advice I can give you. Thank you.